Sorry, it took me so long. Oh. Ah. Sorry, my mouth guard, safety first. Sorry it took me so long. That, that shrine of the silver monkey is really killing me. It's only three parts, but under pressure, it's really tough to do. Oh, man. Oh. <sighs> uh, anyways, man, I need a drink. You know, and I thought that since, uh, you know, we're the golden monkeys that we'd make ourselves a brass monkey. How does that sound? Oh, man. Oh. You know, the brass monkey has a, has a bit of a weird story. It, uh, it was named actually by an advertising executive and uh, it was named after a spy from the early 40s uh, in Macau. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, man, PPE, right? You can't ever have enough. So safety first, especially against those temple guards. So 1942, the story goes, there was a gentleman who was a Austrian uh, merchant house. Uh, he was the head of some Austrian merchant house uh, in Macau, which then was a Portuguese, uh, it was a Portuguese colony. And so, you know, World War II, you got the Axis over in Asia, and then you've got uh, the Axis over in Europe, and the Allies are beating them back both ways. It's a lot going on in all the different theaters. And so uh, the story goes that there was this bar called the Brass Monkey in Macau, and it was the hotbed. It was the hotbed of the information exchange, all the spies, and... And, you know, the Kampeitai, the, the Japanese Imperial uh, Secret Service and, and Intelligent Agency, they, they got wind that the Brass Monkey was why information kept getting uh, to folks and they were getting uh, men and arms into China. Now, so, the Brass Monkey also had an eponymous cocktail called the brass monkey, obviously eponymous, and it was as bright as sunshine, but as mysterious as moonlight. So I thought, what better way to ring out a thirsty Thursday? So we're going to start with taking, I'm using my mixing glass. You can use any glass. You can build this one in your glass with ice, because this is just one where you pour stuff in and you stir and then you drink. And this cocktail, it really became popular because uh, a, a company called Hubline had all of these uh, mixed, pre-mixed cocktails. Uh, they had 18 and the 19th in 1971 was the Brass Monkey for men and women who don't just want to wait for things to happen. We're going to make this happen for you. So the Brass Monkey was number 19 in their lineup of pre-mixed cocktails, the predecessor of the Mike's Hard Lemonade and the Zima. And so it took rum, it took vodka, it took orange juice. They said, these Hubline folks, and by the way, uh, Hubline became uh, Diageo uh, in the past, I guess it was in the 90s. Uh, it merged with Guinness and uh, it got bought up uh, by, or no, it, 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 Guinness and another company became Diageo. So, uh, we still have all their brands. Hubline actually is the one that, uh, brought Smirnoff in. They bought Smirnoff. They owned Jose Cuervo for a while. They actually had Rose's lime juice and grenadines and all that stuff and Perrier water. They had a whole host of stuff. So they were a big deal. So let's get mysterious and sunshiny. They said, these Hubline folks said that they went back to Macau and they got the original recipe from the Brass Monkey Club, even though it supposedly closed down in 1943. But I don't know. But the generally folks say it's equal parts, dark rum, vodka, orange juice. I'm gonna change it up a little bit. We're gonna get a little bit more. We're gonna call this the Golden Monkey. Not the brass monkey, it's the golden monkey, because we're gonna upgrade. So we're gonna start out with 
We're gonna use dark rum. I have goslings here because we were making um, dark and stormies. And we're gonna do one and a quarter ounce, just a little bit of a skitch, as my friend Marlene likes to say, skitch more. And I'm gonna throw it on the counter too. Ooh, it's on my pants. You know, disinfectant. And then we're going to do one and a quarter ounce of vodka. I'm using Civic Vodka. It's a DC distilled vodka. And it, uh, it's, it's right here, it's Republic Restoratives, lady owned as well. They also have hand sanitizer. And then I did fresh squeezed orange juice and I actually did a mix of tangerine juice and orange juice just to make it a little, a little bit tangier. And then, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that in. Oh my gosh, the temple guard, it's a temple guard. Take the amulet, take the amulet, take the amulet. Take it, take it, take it. I thought I was done with them. Anyways, so now we're gonna then add two and a half ounces of our orange juice. You know, you never know. I'm gonna probably have to go to therapy for that. One and a half. Three quarters, a quarter. I can still do math though. This is not the best cup to do orange juice pouring in. Now, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a tiki twist uh, and I'm gonna add some orgeat to it and we're gonna do a half an ounce of the orgeat. And uh, you know, the orgeat is a, it's an almond, it is an almond cordial syrup. So there's no alcohol in it. And this one is the Fee Brothers one. It's very nice. And, and so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna give this a little, a little bit of a stir. Here's a photo of the original Hue Blind Brass Monkey cocktail. Not very sexy, is it? I'm showing you this to distract you from the fact that my editing skills are complete and utter garbage. So Hue Blind even put out these ads about, you know, this, this mysterious figure, this H-E Rask or Rasky, I'm not sure. Uh, that, that, you know, he was like, ah, you know, the taken over Macau because that place was, was the place where information trading was number one and drinking was number two. And I'm sure they traded information like pogs in the cafeteria where a big juicy one would cost you a mondo, a gushers and a dunkaroo. And then they would drink these brass monkeys like Ecto coolers during swim camp in July. They even said this guy smuggled so much information in and out of Macau right under the Kampeitai's nose that the section chief of Macau committed seppuku. And then that's why the ad execs were like, ah, this is a very romantic figure. We must do it. We must, we must put this cocktail out there for the masses. So here it is. So we are going to pour this over ice and I've got a fancy pineapple here. So we're gonna pour it over ice. Lovely. Just give it a little quick stir. We had a visitor in there. <laughs> All right, now for the most important part, the garnish. Because remember, we must be sunshiny, but also mysterious because we are men and women who don't just wait for things to happen. We are brass monkey drinkers. We are golden monkey drinkers. And yes, I know it's the green monkeys, but this monkey on my shirt is yellow, which means it's gold, so this is a golden monkey. Work with me. So, we're gonna get a little bit into pyrotechnics. And uh, we're also going to put some, some mint in here, right on top. Mm-hmm. Just like that, make it beautiful and green. And then I'm putting a, uh, an orange that I've, I've hollowed out. I literally just cut the orange 
in half and then just stuck my thumb in there and just squeezed all the juice out. And uh, so it, it's gonna look, it's gonna look like that. It's gonna look like a little bowl. So then we're gonna take our, well, this mint, all right. So we're gonna take a little bowl and we're going to fill it full of 151 because nothing's fun without fire. So we're gonna fill up our little bowl. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we're gonna light this sucker on fire. Now, isn't that a sight to behold? And then what you can do is you can just tip that little guy right into your drink and also set your mint right on fire. So I'm just gonna put that out and set this over here. Cheers, everyone.